On this episode, we take a look inside the greatest organization you've never heard of to find out how they're creating thousands of great careers while keeping the American dream alive. He's got a $40,000 scholarship to get a welding engineering degree. And I learned firsthand, <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks. I really don't see the difference. This is the award ceremony of the Skills USA Championships. These young adults are focused on becoming skilled tradespeople. Why? If the American dream were only about entrepreneurs getting rich, most people would fall short. But for the average Jane or Joe, the dream is a good job and a steady paycheck. And a lot of these good jobs are in the skilled trades. That's where Skills USA comes in. On most of our shoots, I show up knowing next to nothing about the subject at hand. But this one's a little different because this is the national competition for Skills USA the best path to the American dream that most people have never even heard of. I come here whenever I can because Skills USA has filled in the gap that was created when Votech vanished from high schools. Love the show, man. I love the show. Thanks. Like the outfit. Every year, this organization trains over 300,000 students in dozens of different skilled trades. Now, the best of the best are competing for scholarships they're guaranteed to change their lives. Meet Alex Paskowski, up, man? Team USA right. silver yeah, medalist for world skills. Silver. This close. <laughs> In my own humble opinion, there's no better way for the average American to find a way to prosper than by mastering a skill that's actually in demand. And I love meeting people who agree with me. Welding is like the job of jobs. We're looking for a shortage of over 250,000 workers in the next 10 years, retiring ages. We've got to fill those jobs, but unfortunately our career counselors are pushing people to a bachelor's degree in business administration and they end up working at McDonald's or wherever, flipping burgers. Uh, Alex, you got a silver in internationals, world what? Internationals, yep, the world skills competition. Why are you here? Totally by accident, man. When I first got into it and I had quit baseball and uh, it kind of filled my competitive nature. and I figured out that the harder I worked at it, the better I would get at it, and that was exciting to me, so I kept with it. And, and if I can interject, you said he quit baseball. Yeah. Well, he's got a $40,000 scholarship to get a welding engineering degree. Baseball, there was no guarantee that he'd have a career in baseball. As we speak right now, there's a big chunk of the population dreaming about playing professional baseball. The number of people who are going to realize that dream is this big, <laughs> and the number of people who are going to make a career out of it, but, Everywhere I read, it's six-figure jobs waiting for people who are willing to apply themselves. Yeah, definitely. This building is bursting with people who are excited about finding jobs that many parents and guidance counselors don't want for their kids. I'm here because I think that many parents and guidance counselors are making a huge mistake by steering kids away from many legitimate opportunities. We gotta get you starting with a torch. Let's do it. Here's your jacket, yep. here's your helmet, there's your safety glasses and your gloves. Alex knows what he needs to do, so I guess I need to brief you. Yeah. <laughs> I would. So you're using an oxyacetylene cutting torch. Naturally. And what you're doing is chemistry at its finest. Uh-huh. We are rapidly oxidizing carbon steel. We're heating it up. We're putting a stream of oxygen through there. Yeah. And we're making it rust really fast to burn it or cut it. He's <laughs> and, got the uh, same thing. He's got the I same, got the same thing. thing. Uh, let me get you set up, Mike, with yep. uh your torch, what you have is you have your oxygen. What you don't want to do is let that oxygen get into your clothing or something because that's part of the fire triangle. We need heat, fuel, and oxygen to create a fire. So here we have this fuel, here we have the oxygen, and we've got to create heat to get it going, so we have the striker that lets me strike to start that torch. Right. Have you lit a torch before? Oh, I probably did at some point I'm sure in my you life, have. but it's not kind of, it's not the thing I do on a daily basis. <laughs> Each competition lays out specific tasks to be completed within a certain time period. For this simulated contest, it's silver medalist versus rank amateur. Seems like a fair matchup. Let's just start with the basics. This is what, cast iron? This is carbon steel, carbon 836 steel. plate. It's half inch thick, 12 inch square. I'm gonna cut Chased this hole out. out. I'm gonna cut that triangle out, cut that hole out, and you're gonna cut that straight out. So we're gonna start off with the acetylene here. Oh, we got a safety hazard. We lost your safety glasses around your neck. Uh, Not lost, just simply in the wrong area. Perfect. There you Good go. Good catch. It's 
it's protecting your neck that way, right? That's right. Yeah, that's good. My voice is very important to what <laughs> yeah. I do. Yeah, I heard you were an opera singer at one point. Just focus on your gig, <laughs> would you? All right, so you're going to turn on this right here. This is the acetylene. You're going to just crack it open like yep. that. There we go. Just that, so you got a nice little feather here. Yeah. And then you're going to turn on your oxygen. Your oxygen will meet the inner cone in the middle. That'll make a neutral flame like that. Yep. And then when you're ready to cut, you're going to get this thing all real nice and hot. Yep. And when you're ready to cut, that's your go button right there. So you'll hit that, and it'll start the cut, and you just point and shoot at that point. You want me to leave it on for you? No, that's all right. I'll, I'll do it. Okay. I mean, it's important to learn. If I don't it do is, it, I'll never it is, learn. It is, it is. You know? All right, man. I'll be here to judge this thing, and uh, if I see any safety hazards, I might have to pull the plug. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. There we go. Now turn that acetylene down just a little bit. Our entire infrastructure is held together by welds and the people who know how to make them. People who are not me. Hey, we're going for a straight line. That's too bad. Right now, a good welder who's willing to go where the work is can pretty much write his or her own ticket. Hey, hey, it, it actually cut in half. All right. Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate that. I really don't see the difference. I, I can't hardly tell either. Before we ruin your camera, yeah. pull the trigger, straighten back up, make your hole, do a circle like a spiral out. See how much steadier you are now that you lean on the table to get physically comfortable? So One of the first rules to welding or cutting is you need to get physically comfortable. Not too bad, Mike, for your first hole cut. I thought it was considered cheating to be physically comfortable. Get a little closer with those kicks. done. I was told there was no time limit. <laughs> Stuck. Take that for you. Beautiful. <laughs> Please, thank you. Take your seats, everyone. Thank you. Now we got to see how you did, Mike, for real. A little go, no-go gauge. We're going to just test to make sure you didn't go outside the required dimension. We can see Alex is inside those holes, so that's good. Line it up on the plate. Not bad, man. Not too bad. Stay in the hole. Yeah, it looks pretty good. One spot pushing the limit, but I think you're okay. Yeah. Better so than hey, the we're first in there. time I did it. Now really? the, the bigger yes. moment of truth. Now we got to see if this will fit in there. Oh, so the moment of truth. Says, not too bad. We're pretty good there. We need a hammer for it. It'll fit just fine. Yeah, huh? I can make that fit. I'll try this one. Ooh, Alex! Oh, Ooh. That's, just, oh, yeah, that's what silver Ooh. is Failed. all that's about. Right. That's right. <laughs> Alex is the guy you want repairing that bridge you cross every day to work. Clearly, Alex deserved that silver medal. Every student competing here has already won a competition at the state level. If they stick with it, they will absolutely find work. So how often do you see, in the course of doing this, somebody that just makes you go, man, you can go as far as you want? I see it every time I talk to someone that was a SkillsUSA alumni, because everyone I talk to has an excellent job, and they're incredibly hireable. I love what's happening here. Thanks for your time. I don't want to slow the competition down, but really a pleasure. You're fun to watch. Thank you, man. Thanks for doing it. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. All right, then. We're off to whatever's next. When I'm not impersonating a show host on the TV, I run a modest foundation that tries to make a case for good jobs that actually exist. Skills USA is maybe our best hope of closing the skills gap by showing parents and kids just how much opportunity is actually out there. But not all skilled labor requires steel-toed boots. Some of it just takes an apron and a steady hand. I'm at the commercial baking competition here at Skills USA. And what's your name? Paul. Paul, I'm Mike. How are you? Nice to meet you. You are? Felicia. Felicia. So we got Felicia, we got Paul, we've got Pete, and we got Vicky. Vicky, Vicky you're holding that hat like you want to put it on me. Yeah. Good idea. You have to take that one off first. <coughs> okay. We, we have to put the apron on. Apron on first, though. All right, well, let's do that then. I'll trade you for this. All right. Are we going to bake a cake or are we decorating cakes? You're going to decorate a cake. You're going to ice and decorate the cake. What's the difference? Well, you're not baking it, obviously. No, you said ice and decorate. You're going to ice the cake with a better cream icing, and then you're going to decorate it with roses. You mean put the icing on it. You don't mean yeah. put it in the freezer right. to ice it. Right. You're Why the hat's so funny looking? It's a European toque. So well, that's... You, we don't have any American hats? They gave me the European toque. It's from the American Culinary Federation, so you're just going to have to wear it. 
They got it's American the best hats. I can do. It's, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, they brought theirs from home. It's Skills USA with a European hat. That's right. <laughs> so good luck. It goes like that. Is it big enough? For it? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that? yeah, it's good. It's All right, good. What, what was that, Pete? What did that signify right there? There's a buzzer for different competitions. That, that some of the competitions are time. Part of Skills USA is a partnership between education and industry, so that we. You're here because your industry, without qualified bakers, suddenly becomes not an industry. Correct, and we we struggle to find people that are qualified in bakery work, cake decorators. Yeah. Today we've got 40 students from the high school. And they're competing as we speak right now. Yes, they are. If they get first place, they get a full ride scholarship to one of three culinary schools. Full ride is uh, about 40,000 a year. So it's grown up money. Big bucks. While students are coming out of college mired in debt with no guarantee for a job in their field, the students who participate at Skills USA are gaining valuable training that makes them ready for the workforce as soon as they graduate. So this is how the competition works and everybody gets the same order. Right. And everybody has to bring it to life as best they can. Then you, are you a judge? or No, I'm not a judge. Most of them are certified master bakers that come in to judge. CMBs? Yes, when they come in from uh, the pastry chefs and everything else. All right, so this is basically the cake order. As you can see, uh, Amy Davis's phone number is on there. That's a little rude. We probably just shared that with the whole world. <laughs> Quarter sheet with white icing, red roses, and green <laughs> leaves. And written on the cake, somebody's got to do it. Go! Bang. <laughs> so they're starting with that. Well, yeah, well, do you it? don't have that. You're using the spatula. <laughs> well, that just seems immediately unfair. Plop it. Plop it. And then Put more. You're going to see you already got crumbs. Yeah, how, how do I get crumbs? Because you're pulling it up from the from the cake. Crumb alert. <laughs> well, who cares, man? It's crumbs. I mean, it's all part of the cake, right? If you were trying to sell in a bakery, you can't have crumbs like that. Can't quite look like that either. <laughs> Why are they going so fast? Because they've been <laughs> practicing. Paul, oh, it's a competition, not a race, all right? Oh, oh Chill okay. out, sorry, man. Sorry, I'll, I'll slow down. You know, a little bit. decaf in your future would be the time. end of the world. Paul's almost done, I see you. Hey, Paul's almost done. Look at you. That's fantastic. <laughs> Paul's my personal hero. <laughs> he is. Somebody wanted to know hey, he was I my son because he did yeah. such a nice That's cake good. yesterday. Am I putting too much on? You're getting a little bit a lot young. You need to kind of back it up. <laughs> There you go. Sorry, I glanced up for a second there. <laughs> Don't just focus on your own cake there, Paul. All right? It's getting there. If it looks like I'm just slapping icing on a cake, it's because I'm just slapping icing on a cake. Paul and Felicia, though, bring some artistry to the task at hand. So you're going with the cursive? I am. All right. But you don't have to. You just decided that's the way to go? We do because it looks more professional to the customers. You ever spell a word wrong on a cake? Like, happy birthday, something like that. I have, actually. You just put it in the freezer. When you take it out, it's easier to take it off. Have you ever misspelled anything on a cake? Oh, yeah. Tell me. What's the surprise. word? Surprise. I spelled it surprise. Surprise. S-U-P-R-I-Z-E. <laughs> -E. No, I S E. It was bad enough. Uh, what did the customer say? She wasn't very happy. I usually, I'm a real stickler on spelling, so I don't know how I did it. Well, you just said, look, it's a surprise. Yeah, a surprise, <laughs> a surprise. Okay. Surprise. How'd you make your roses? Did you put them on a oh. nail? Or? Uh, yeah, I used I used a rose nail. You just make circular motions, and then it's basically a half moon shape. You start down, you go up, and back down. Yeah. The petals, I remember you a little bit of that, and 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 a little bit of that. <laughs> that's that's a good start. Yes. I'm making a rose. You're making a rose. <laughs> There's been some sort of disease in my garden. <laughs> What it Beautiful. looks like, this is what it's Beautiful. supposed to look like. <laughs> so, oh, I see what you want to do. All right. Fair. There's a little game we play. You at home can play along. I'm going to mix these up, and you have to guess which one I did and which one Vicky did. <laughs> Not so easy, is it? <laughs> the judges are in the house. It says, made according to the directions. Followed cake order. Three to five roses, a little bit of thing. Pretty sure I won't be hired as a cake decorator anytime soon. The judges, though, were very supportive. And as we were taught, the biggest room in the world is room for improvement. The biggest room in the world is room for improvement.
I'd love to show you all of the other 96 trades represented here, but we're out of time, and over 15,000 participants are now heading to Kemper Arena for the closing ceremonies. This is the award ceremony of the Skills USA Championships. The amazing thing to me, in spite of all this enthusiasm, is how few people know about this organization and what they accomplish year after year. They deserve all the press they can get. Tonight, we will be awarding hundreds of gold, silver, and bronze medallions to our Skills USA champions. For the students, these awards are life-changing. But all this should matter on a much larger level. Anybody who shares my addiction to smooth roads and sturdy foundations and indoor plumbing should realize a skilled workforce, kind of a big deal. This year's Torch Carrier recipient included Skills USA in several national events. In addition, his foundation has invested $170,000 in need-based travel scholarships for competitors since 2011. It's not a dirty job, but it is a job he is profoundly connected to. That's me. Please welcome Torch Carrier Award winner, Mr. Mike. You guys get it. You're on the front line, and if more people understand what you do, if more people get involved in your organization, a lot of really cool things are gonna happen to the country. The infrastructure is gonna start to get better. The skills gap is gonna start to close, and more manufacturing is going to come back to where? The United States of America. You guys are the best. See you next year. Thank you so much. It's easy to read the headlines and assume the American dream is on the ropes. But it's hard to feel pessimistic when you're surrounded by 15,000 kids who are eager to master a skill that's in demand. Awesome. Thank you. And if you ask them why that matters, you can probably guess the answer.